there are quite a few things that are happening. But really, the most important thing that is impacting the oil markets, to be fair, oil markets are in an expecting stage. Anything could happen to the oil market. And this all is revolving around Iran and Israel. When on 31st of July, Israel, most probably Israel, Israel has not conceded it as yet, but uh, most of the analysts and including from Iran and other places are saying that Israelis were behind the killing of Ismail Haniya on Wednesday, July 31. Now that is going to have implications. Everyone knew that. And one of the things were that oil markets would be impacted if something in retaliation happens. Now from 31st July to today when I'm talking, it would be 16th of August in your uh, place. And for last 15, 16 days, the markets have definitely been just in an expecting stage. They have been expecting that when would Iran react to it? And how would Iran react to it? Now, if you recall in the initial days, immediately after the Israeli attack, or let's say the killing of Ismail Hanea. There were question marks and Ali Khamenei, the, Isra the Iranian supreme leader had come out with that statement. We will not accept it and we will react with virtually everything at our disposal and Israel would be punished to the, to the extent it deserves. Now, ever since the world has been expecting what is going on and what would be the impact of it. Now, since then, not much has happened. Now, the question marks are that what Iran could do as far as let's get to the crude markets literally what Iran could do to, to the crude markets number one it could hit Israel number two it could create some problems in the flow of crude oil from the Straits of Hormuz and that would mean that something like 33 uh, percent of the global oil could be impacted because from the Straits of Hormuz there's a narrow area which Iran could definitely hit out if it wants to, although it would have consequences for Iran as well. Nothing denying that fact, but that could happen. And as a result, 30 to 33 percent of oil flowing to the world could get impacted and the prices would go up. Now, the issue is how far these prices could go up. That is a big question. No one could really say it. No one has an answer to it. The reason being no one still knows what Iran is going to do or if really Iran is going to do anything. Because there have been some indications in recent days that there is a possibility that Iran may not react to it provided Israel agrees to a ceasefire, a complete ceasefire in Gaza. Whether it happens or not, there are many ifs and buts to it. So in case Iran reacts, what would be the impact on the oil and energy world? Now, immediately when these hostilities began in, on October 7, almost immediately after that, World Bank came out with a very interesting report in that sense. And it said that if because of the Iranian retaliation, there is a small disruption, and what did they mean by small disruption? Something between 500,000 barrels to 2 million barrels per day. Now, the total global consumption is roughly around 100 million barrels a day. So this meant half percent to 2% of the global. So if the Iranian retaliation impacts from half million to 2 million barrels a day, the prices could go up to from 3 to 13%. Now that is significant, even for a small disruption. And this 3 to 13% was some around what had happened during the Libyan uh, civil war. During that period also the, almost the same sort of um, uh, disruption had taken place. So that could take the prices up, the, the global crude prices up from 3 to 13 percent. Now the second scenario, if there is a medium disruption, now what did the World Bank mean by a medium disruption? It said three to five million barrels a day of, uh, of supplies are disrupted. Now, what is this? This is roughly equivalent to the Iraq war. Now, that meant that uh, the prices it says for three to five million barrels a day, the prices could go up to from 21 to 35 percent of the current prices. And then there was another scenario that the World Bank came out with. That the prices, there's a large disruption. And again, what did they mean by large disruption? 
six to eight million barrels a day. Now, what is this six to eight million barrels a day? It is almost equivalent to what had happened. You may not have been even born. I have, of course, uh, uh, to some extent heard of it and followed it later on. That uh, the six to eight million barrels a day was similar to what happened in during the Arab oil embargo of 1973, which brought, which literally crippled the world, brought the world into a recession. Now, if something like that, six to eight million barrels a day, and you cannot write that off, if really that sort of disruption happens, the price could go up uh, between 56 to 75 percent. Huge, 56 to 75 percent. Now, currently the price is 77, 78 dollars per barrel. And if this sort of large disruption takes place of somewhere around six to eight million barrels a day, the price could go up something between 120 to 135 barrels a day, uh, 135 dollars per barrel a day. The question would remain, can world sustain it? That is a big, big question. Already there, there have been, uh, this discussion has been going on that the world is heading towards the recession or not. But there have been again been some indications. Growth has slowed down in many places. Now, in case this sort of prices go up, there would definitely be a recession of a big scale. So the world is literally expecting, awaiting to see what is going to happen and our fingers stand crossed for the time being. Iran has to retaliate, rest assured, one way or the other. Otherwise, there would be domestic issues with Iran. Ali Khamenei has literally said it that we would. Until unless the recent thing that, as I mentioned, that there is a ceasefire agreement, then perhaps Iran might be pushed to get back from that. So Iran, otherwise Iran will have to react. How does it react? And remember it, Iran is a is one of the major producers of oil. Now, let's say Iran gets involved into something to disrupt oil embargo or disrupt supplies from Straits of Hormuz. Its supply would definitely be impacted. Secondly, for the US and other European powers, it may not be easy to keep quiet then. Then they would react, try to hit out on Iran so that this disruption is avoided. Now, even if that sort of anything uh, goes is begins that would also mean that the oil supplies would be impacted either a small disruption medium or large that's another thing but it would be disrupted if a war the war theater expands from israel and gaza to uh, iran and the world powers on the, in the straits of Hormuz, uh, in libya on, on the uh, houthi sides so all these things could impact now, whether your question was whether Iran can sustain it or not, it will be difficult for Iran, that for sure. But Iran slowly and gradually has been sending out, has been increasing its exports one way or the other, despite all the sanctions. So, and when it said it so, that it would react, it knew what the implications could be. So despite that, Ali Al Khamenei came out with that statement. So that, and Iran will have to do it under domestic compulsions as well. So that meant, that Iran will have to sustain it at least for a brief period of time. And even if it goes on for a brief period of time, that would impact the global energy markets and the crude prices. You see, if supplies from Iran goes down, what for it would go down? There would be difficulties in flow of oil from this part of the world, the Middle East, to the rest of the world. Now that would, it would impact the Arab oil producers as well. They would also find it difficult. From the Red Sea, there are already a difficulty because of the Houthis not permitting free flow of uh, containers to the world, shipping containers to the world. And if, if something, that is a big if, I'm not saying that this would happen, but there is a possibility that Iran might retaliate and harm us. So all these would definitely impact flow of oil uh, from the Middle East to the world. Now, these are all ifs and buts. Very difficult to come out with a, a final word on it. But there are other compulsions on OPEC as well. Suppose OPEC wants to uh, wants to increase its uh, output and nothing is happening on the Iran front. Let's say it's quiet, it's wonderful, everything is going smooth. The prices are already on $77 a barrel. That means that if it opens up its uh, taps a little more further, there is every possibility the prices may go, go down. Instead. Now look at it, who is the largest importer of oil these days? China, definitely yes. Chinese, there are question marks about the Chinese consumption these days. Chinese, uh, how the Chinese economy is going to do? There are question marks that the 
Chinese exports are going down, Chinese crude consumption is going down. So all these things are impacting. Can really OPEC open up stats? But then there is the flip side of the coin as well. There's a growing pressure within the OPEC, especially from producers other than Saudi. You see, most of these cuts have been borne the uh, have been borne by Saudi Arabia to a very great extent. Even for Saudis, it's difficult to keep on bearing it all alone. And the others are already pushing OPEC that let our export quotas go up. Emirates has, has already done it. Iraq is already doing it. Iran has already done it. So all said and done, that push and pulls on, on OPEC. On one side, the market is saying, don't push uh, your output, keep it low so that the prices continue at least at the uh, at the current level, if not up. But on the other hand, there is a growing pressure on OPEC within from within to in let the output grow. So it is a very difficult for, uh, call for OPEC and it would not at all be easy for them. Plus also this issue of Iran versus Israel and uh, uh, the um, war theater widening further. That would have impact. So OPEC's decision would must depend upon all these factors. As I mentioned earlier also, uh, recession is being discussed all around. If a recession comes in, even this would be too much for the oil markets. And with China, US oil consumption issues, especially China. China is the largest importer of oil these days. And its imports are not that strong. Even there have been recent reports that although India and China are not really comparable as far as the volume of imports are concerned, but India is an emerging market. Its, expo its imports of crude oil has gone up and India is also doing a wonderful thing that they are importing from Russia and uh, Iran cheaper products and they are basically converting it into fuel and re-exporting it to different parts of the world. So that is keeping their uh, import of crude oil at a certain high level. But even not only China, but even Indian imports of crude oil has, has gone down. Pakistan is not in that category, but our economics, we are coming to an economic halt literally. And that means less and less consumption of uh, crude oil. So virtually when you look around, Asia was regarded to be the really uh, once upon a time when the last recession 2008-9 uh, did take place, people were saying that China is the dragon which is keeping the global oil eco economy running. Now the Chinese dragon has pulled down the Indian. Uh, so the, uh, the entire Asian markets are not as enthusiastic about crude as they used to be before. So what does it underline that with fundamentals weak, once these, fun uh, the, these geopolitical issues are gone as you yourself mentioned, once these are gone, that where are the prices going to go? Down and down and down. To what extent? I cannot really forecast it.